course, we'll open up for questions. Yeah, well, great high-level women's college basketball game, I thought. Um, obviously, two ranked teams, but a lot ton of respect for Oklahoma and, and Jenny and what she does with that program. They are, they're hard to guard. They're hard to prepare for. Um, you know, just in a short time, she's just done some remarkable stuff, and they were hot coming in, playing really, really well. I think it was nine in a row, if I'm not mistaken. So we were getting a hot team that shares it. I think they share it and move the ball better than any team that we've played all year and maybe as good as, as any team in the country. Um, so, yeah, they, they gave us everything and more um, for us. I thought we were – I thought there was some beauty to it. I thought there was some just terrible basketball, especially early, um, that I thought maybe could happen um, just because of the pace in which Oklahoma plays. They have the top pace in the country coming in. Um, and so – and we we're turning the ball over and just didn't look like ourselves. Um, but to our kids' credit, I thought they responded after that first time out, um, got back in the game in the first quarter, um, and then from there, you know, back and forth for a lot of it, um, played kind of some different lineups, had different rotations, just uh, trying to figure out who might work together. Um, but then I thought we settled in a little bit, um, made some big shots, made some big plays late, got enough stops, and then again tried to give it away or at least let them right back in it um, there with the turnover late. Um, probably and could have used that last time out, but I thought maybe we were a little better prepared. Um, so we didn't, but again, got the stop, got the free throws. Of course, Tot missed the first free throw, and that um, kind of probably sealed it at that point. But, um, yeah, just uh, thought the crowd was phenomenal. It was loud in there. Um, certainly helped us kind of overcome and get past that hump in the fourth quarter. Um, as far as personnel, I, mean, I thought our bench was fantastic today. Um, you know, I think we beat them 27 to 10 in bench points, so um, that hasn't happened a ton for us this year. Um, Jayla Hemingway going six for six, hit the huge three. Um, I think that was in the fourth. So I thought she was great. Danelle was good. And then Tavi hit some big buckets too for us when we needed it, um, you know, and we were trying to attack and, and get some paint touches. Um, Kaya played the entire night. Um, just, man, that kid does everything for us, so it's so hard for me to <laughs> to take her out at times. Um, Jordan didn't shoot it very well, but, man, she just does everything for us. And then after JJ's not good start at all, um, I thought she settled in and, and got going a little bit. So, um, yeah, really proud of the group. Uh, that's a big win for us in the program and, uh, you know, keeps us in the race, I guess, so to speak, of the of the Big Big 12 Conference regular season. So um, still lots of work to do, but this was a good one to get. So, Mark, their coach just uh, really complimented Tavi. You know, she was he, she called her the difference in the game. So her and Danielle, their, their post ability to score, uh, how important was that for you? And was that something you wanted to do coming in, or is that just sort of – happenstance that it worked out like. well a little bit of both um, those are the two players on our team that can give you a back-to-back -back presence back to basket presence but for us we always want to work from the inside out is kind of our term you know and so play through the paint um, you can do that by throwing it into a post player you can do it by passing off cuts you can do it off the dribble so we are a little hodgepodge of all of those um, we're not necessarily dependent on any one of those um, but that's just kind of what the game called for I guess and so that's why we went a little bit bigger and you know we couldn't get Kylie going much and so we just went with the bigger lineup oh you doesn't have a ton of size now they're they're good in there and they can give you know they can give you some problems but they're not one of the bigger teams in our league either um, and so then we thought maybe we might have a little advantage so we just kind of kept throwing it to her and yeah to Tavi's credit that little fadeaway fell enough so not my favorite but uh, as long as it's going in it's always my favorite coach uh, a couple weeks ago you told the uh told a story about the, the, this team's demeanor, about how it doesn't get too panicky in, in situations and, you know, hey, coach, we got it kind of thing. So 8 nothing. is this an example of that kind of, uh, you know, the way they responded to that? Yeah, yeah, and I got into them pretty good. That was one of my more passionate timeout speeches. I made sure that boom mic wasn't over me on that one. I would have told him probably to back up. Uh, you're not going to get anything out of this one. Um, but yeah, no, um, they did. They just responded and we just needed to settle down. I just think we were a little jacked up. And when JJ's dribbling it off of her leg and stuff, I'm sure we were just a little probably overly excited. Um, but again, I thought the response was great um, and we settled in quickly, but it did get to 11 to three, if I'm not mistaken, I think, right. It went from 8-0 to 11-3 and then kind of, you know, from there won the quarter. Um, from that point forward. So, yeah, just needed to settle. But, yeah, no, they were like that again. They were pretty, even at halftime, they felt good, and we just needed to make a few adjustments. And then, yeah, stayed with it, stayed the course. Coach, on that same note, though, they're late in the fourth quarter when you kind of go the two extremes of you're up six and then all of a sudden it's a two-point game. Did you sense any level of panic from your group? No, not a ton. I mean, there was a couple of them, like, you look in their eyes, like, what the heck did we just do? I think Kaya was really upset with herself for the turnover 
you know, and then, you know, with Oklahoma and the, the better teams, when you make a mistake, they make you pay. So I thought we lost some 50-50 battles, and then every time they hit a three off of it. I think it was Jordan and Kaya on the loose ball, go fight for it. We lose it, you know, and for them, they shoot it so well, then it's a dagger three. The rebound that might have been a shot clock violation that wasn't kick out three that I thought we should have had. And so, you know, that's where they got us too much. They got us a little bit in transition, which we had prepared for and kind of had a plan. Um, so just some of the stuff we didn't execute. But at the same time, when you give up 13 threes and find a way to win, then you did a lot of other things really well. And so I'll, I guess I'll clean those up and then be proud that we found the other stuff. Did the Sooners surprise you from beyond the arc? I think they entered something like 196th in the country in three-point percentage. No, not not in any way, shape, or form. No, not that percentage, but no, that's what they do. They, they play fast, like I said. I think that's it's the number one pace in the country, so they shoot quick. They shoot threes quick, uh, but they shoot with just a crazy confidence, and that's, you know, that's what Jenny does for them and allows them to play with this just extreme confidence to shoot the basketball on the offensive end. So you don't want them to go, I think, yeah, 13 for 21. That's not good enough on our end. Um, but, no, they can do that, um, and I think our goal was to keep them at eight or nine or less, and so we missed missed the mark on that one. Is there any more satisfaction, I guess, of winning a game in the fashion where your bench was relied on so heavily and you were able to you know, not have to count on all five starters maybe the way you normally do? Huh, yeah, I'm sure there's another way, but I can't think of it right now. So I'm going to enjoy it uh, the way it happened. But, I mean, yeah, for the bench to get to have that night, I, I think that's long overdue for this group. Um, you know, they've just stayed the course. Jayla was kind of in a funk for a minute. So to see her come out of it, I just, man, I'm so proud of that kid and the super senior to have, you know, that win on the on the home court. Um, you know, Danelle's just gotten better and better. We've talked about that in here multiple times. She just keeps getting better. And, and Tavi's a super senior that, that's played in some, you know, some bigger games and been, been in these moments. But it's hard when you come off the bench because you never know when your number may get called like that. And so you just kind of have to stay ready. Um, so credit to them um, and the other group, you know, that didn't get to play play as much just to stay stay motivated coach you'd mentioned Jordan earlier and you know I mean she goes two for ten but you know I'm thinking of a, a, a huge offensive rebound she grabbed for you in the fourth quarter she turns that into an assist to, to Tavi uh, one of her two field goals came like a minute later in the fourth quarter when you're trying to protect the lead and then obviously she makes the free throws there at the, at the, uh, the little things like that that she does in games like this can end up being huge uh, the difference. Things, yeah, yeah, it can be the difference. No, that's Jordan Harrison to a T. I mean, you know, that's she finds ways to impact the game even when she's not scoring. And, you know, I've said this before too. Naturally, she wasn't a scorer. Even when we recruited her, she played with such good talent around her. She was a facilitator first. And when I got her at SFA, it was – you know, we quickly understood, like, you're going to have to score for us, you know, for this team. And she was way too sped up early in her career. And then it quickly settled down and she became a scorer and, and obviously has been for us as our second leading scorer. But, you know, I think she's, you know, if she's not the best point guard in the Big 12 right now. She's one of, you know, at the top. I think that highly of her and, and the impact she has. Um, you know, she got 300 career assists, I think, you know, with one of those tonight and double figures and six rebounds. She's a great rebounding guard. And what she find, four steals or three, I think. Yeah, four steals. Yeah, so the kid is just, yeah, she's legitimately all over the place and she's our leader um, and we trust her. So she's two for 10. You're not even thinking about, oh, it's, it's not her night. We got to get her her out i mean there's because of those other things that she, that she does yeah no and i mean what other we don't have a ton of other options right now this year either so that you know that has a little piece of it but you know yeah it's trying to get her and jj especially in that first quarter early second get them a break let jj slide over to the point if we can um and as long as they fa fa stay out of foul trouble we can do that which tonight we were able to do that at least early and then they can kind of finish it off for us you Mark, touched yeah. on a little bit of the conference race, you know, trying to stay in that. Are you also thinking any about the postseason, the Big 12 tournament, getting that single buy, the double buys? I mean, is that something with the structure of the tournament the way it is this year? Uh, just very little. Um, we have brought it up one time just to make sure they understand the structure of the tournament. Not We don't talk about it much more than that, but we talked about the structure. They understand top four gets a double buy and the, and the significance of that. So we do know that. We needed that one. We need to keep separation if, you know, heaven forbid we can't find a way to the regular season championship, then, you know, secure one of those because I do think that's a huge advantage. Um, haven't thought beyond that in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, just trying to coach talk but stay in the moment and go find the next one and win this one and then enjoy tonight and start the process for the next one because it's a gauntlet, as I've kept saying, and we're in the middle of the, the heaviest gauntlet of the year. 
Go just kind of along that. You go. The preseason picked eighth, I think, if I remember correctly. So the, you know the expectations are you know middle of the road. All of a sudden now you got four games left and you're you know right there, one game back from the title. How, is there is there anything to be said to these girls about you know suddenly going from one spectrum to the other? A, t- a team that is expected to win probably handles it better as opposed to a team that wasn't expected to be there. Now all of a sudden they're there. How, how, how do you deal with that? With yeah, I mean, we don't much. I mean, I think it's, again, it's part of our nature and, and kind of who we are. And, you know, we don't, you know, we give them the standings occasionally. But, God, you know, they can go check that stuff. And they know before I ever go give them the sheet of paper that's got the standings on it, they know exactly, you know, where we stand. Um, but, again, no, they just, they're, they're staying the course. But, you know, we didn't pick ourselves eight. Other people thought that of our program. And, you know, I would have thought it was a, it was a little low at the time. But again, that's not something we're talking about now either. We're just, you know, we're in this position. We've worked our tails off to be in this position. Um, you know, a lot of people keep saying there's no way and you've overachieved and that type of stuff. But um, A, it's not done. And so there's no, you know, you can't even, you know, talk in those terms yet. But it, we got the buy-in. The team got it, the buy-in from each other. They got it from the coaching staff. Um, you know, there's kids that have played in an NCAA tournament game. Um, you know, coaches that have coached in those environments. So, no, it just came together quickly because of all of those things and obviously a place that allows you to have success. And, um, no, I just uh, – I don't want it to end. I've just enjoyed the heck out of it, and I love going to work with this group. And uh, they just keep kind of – I wouldn't say amazing me, but they certainly surprise me with what they keep doing. And uh, we just keep preparing the right way and hope we keep getting better and do something special as, you know, as this gets into March and, and later in March. Mark, your thought of the atmosphere, and, and how much did you guys feed off of that? Yeah, a ton. Um, no, that was a great crowd. I think the score kind of helps keep them in it, too. Um, you know, so they stayed engaged because of the score and it being fairly close and obviously two ranked teams and, and high-level basketball at times. Sometimes it got a little ugly, but for the most part, it was it was pretty high-level. Um, you know, but, yeah, no, we feed off of it, you know, and there is a home court advantage. It's really hard in this league to win on the road. We all know that, so I've, I've termed road wins are gold. Uh, whether that's for us or anybody, if you can go on the road and steal one, that is like a game and a half, you know, in a standings. Um, so you got to protect your home court and then see if you can't steal some stuff on the road. Coach Bryan's had called this game a great game for Big 12 women's basketball. I mean, how, how do you feel about, you know, that kind of level of praise from – from an opposing coach. Yeah, well, yeah, no, I, I thought it was too. I think I said that early on. This was a big time women's college basketball game, and um, you know, two quality teams, ranked teams, top twenty-five, first and second in the Big Twelve. Um, like, yeah, I, I don't. What else would you want in a in a women's basketball game? Um, you know, I just hope people will keep coming and supporting, and you know, we can grow it from what it is now to something really, really special. And, and I understand that's going to take time, um, but I want people to be as excited about women's basketball here as they are in other parts of the country. And I think we can do that here. Or I wouldn't be here as the coach. And uh, so, yeah, it takes opportunities like this and rankings and those types of things to, to create it. Um, but, man, it's fun when you get there, and, and it just makes you work a little bit harder to, to maintain it. Speaking of Danelle and Tabby, you know, it feels like every time they're in the game, they're just always around the ball, always making plays. What can you say about their ability to step up? Yeah, no, they were great. And they had to guard inside today. They had to guard outside because of the dynamic of Oklahoma and the way they play. Um, so it, we asked a lot of them. Um, we mixed up our defenses. We were playing zone, man, trying to press, trying to turn them over a little bit. But then we were turning them over, and maybe they're giving it back or not converting. Uh, but they just give us an inside presence and some size. So even if they don't get the rebound, and Danelle in particular, she's taken up so much space that it allows Jordan and some of those other guards to maybe crash down and, and clean up the glass. And, you know, we've struggled to rebound a little bit, and so they give us maybe just a little better identity, um, you know, to rebound. What can you say about Danelle and her development this season as opposed to where she started? Yeah, no, and we just talked about it again down there as the coaching staff, and y'all didn't see her early, you know, and, and I didn't know what we were going to get out of her, to be honest. We needed a bigger body to battle and, and play against some of the bigs in this league, and we knew she had some development. Um, we got her a little bit later. Um, of course, we, you know, I don't know, we were late, but, you know, it was a new coaching staff, and so the portal was already hot and heavy. Um, you know, and so to her credit, like credit her. She has worked her tail off. She's in so much better shape, you know, getting buckets, catching the ball, finishing around the rim, moving better running better so for her to play because I was worried I didn't know if she could keep up with the pace you know in that game but yeah she she did a phenomenal job and she has a great attitude and she's a joy and pleasure to coach so yeah just really proud of her coach the uh the steals that came outside of the press like uh, you know sneaking up behind player poking the ball away or coming up from the side and that 
How, how big were those kind of uh, moments, uh, you know, that came outside of the, the full court? Well, stuff? yeah, they're big because we're just we were keeping them off balance and uncomfortable, you know, and that's a lot of what we really try to do defensively. If the steal is just the byproduct of the work and putting them in the positions that we want them to be in, and obviously if we can get the steal, steals are live ball turnovers. That's different than a turnover. Um, you know, we didn't get as many steals as we traditionally do, um, but had enough, and then we just got to convert them. But it's really just to make them uncomfortable, right? You're dribbling, and now all of a sudden you're looking over your shoulder because somebody may come and be coming from behind, so maybe you're less aggressive. Um, you know, so just trying to take the offense out of their comfort is all we're really trying to do. And, and for the most part, I thought we did a pretty good job of that. Is that like, one of the things Jordan's the best? Yeah, yeah, Jordan and JJ's pretty good. I mean, they're both ball hawks, yeah. you know, is what we like to call them. So wherever the ball is, they love to go sometimes too much. And that's, you know, against them, you've sent in two to the ball, you're probably in trouble behind it. Um, so you got to be a little careful there. But, yeah, no, they're ball hawks, and, you know, they, they kind of seek ball a little bit, um, you know. But, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, guys.